Insane asylums are meant to be a place of treatment for the mentally ill. However, not everything that occurs in these facilities are beneficial to the patients. In fact, some have such dark pasts with the things that have occurred there that the spirits of those very same patients haunt those buildings to this day. Here are 10 haunted insane asylums with extremely dark pasts. Number 10 is the Gongium Psychiatric Hospital. Just outside of the city of Gwangju in South Korea is the Gongium Psychiatric Hospital, believed to be one of the biggest paranormal hotspots in the country. Closed in 1996 under unclear circumstances, Gongium is still filled with much of the hospital beds, furniture, and paperwork that filled its rooms when it was still in use, almost as if everyone left in a hurry. Rumors for its closure involved a string of deaths, many of them patients. Deaths that could not be explained to their families because they were actually a mystery or because potentially foul play was involved by the doctors. The owner of this facility fled to the United States just before the hospital shut down and was never heard from again. However, if you visit Gongium late at night, it's said that you can still hear its ghostly patients. Number 9 is Denby Asylum. Completed in 1848, Denby Asylum has the honor of being the first institution for the mentally ill in Wales. It was built to house 200 people, but a flood of patients forced an expansion in 1899, allowing for 1,500 patients to access treatment. Though Denby Asylum was an important first step towards recovery for the mentally ill, it destroyed the lives of some of its patients with prefrontal lobotomies, removing bits of their brain. Since the asylum's closure in 1995, it has become a favorite spot for many ghost hunters who have captured various paranormal activity on audio recordings. Witnesses have even described hearing the sounds of laughter as well as screaming coming from the buildings as well as loud bangs and footsteps. One group in particular reported that they felt that they were being watched and then threatened with the sounds of slamming doors. Despite being abandoned for over 20 years, Years, it would appear that there are still some residents remaining. Number 8 is Several's Mental Hospital. Several's Mental Hospital officially opened in May of 1913 in Mile End, England, and was a pioneering institution in the field of medical practices. The doctors at Several's were encouraged to experiment and try whatever they wished on the patients, which led to a lot of unneeded lobotomies and electroconvulsive treatments which are now outlawed. These treatments were used more frequently in the 1950s on women who were admitted for symptoms of depression or if they had illegitimate children. Its doors closed forever in 1997, but it may not be completely empty. According to two gardeners, a pair of shadowy figures were seen working on the estate during a rainstorm. When the gardeners approached to confront the unknown workers, they dematerialized right in front of them. This is just one disturbing report among many coming from this abandoned hospital. Number seven is Danvers State Hospital. Known for its inspirational qualities in the horror genre, the haunted Danvers State Hospital in Danvers, Massachusetts was the birthplace of the prefrontal lobotomy. It was these lobotomies which turned patients into what's being described as living zombies. Opened in 1878, Danvers was built and staffed to house 600 patients, but as time went on, overcrowding became a serious issue, and by 1939, the hospital housed around around 2,360 patients, which was a deadly problem. Due to staff shortages, patients were checked on very infrequently, and any who died from neglect were sometimes left undiscovered for several days. That is, until a doctor finally came by. Anyone brave enough to enter today might just hear mysterious footsteps, see shadowy apparitions, lights flickering on and off, or even doors opening and closing on their own. Have a visit at your own peril. Number six is the Overbrook Asylum. 
Overbrook Asylum was originally built in 1896 as a new hospital in Cedar Grove, New Jersey. During the mid-1920s, it became an insane asylum and ran until its closure in 2007. But what's truly disturbing is that around 10,000 patients met their own death at Overbrook. The facility couldn't keep up with the high demand for mental institutions in New Jersey, with problems of patient overpopulation and understaffing which led to neglected patients. Horrifyingly, patients were lobotomized just to keep them harmless and docile, simply because Overbrook did not have the resources to look after them. Since its closure, urban explorers and ghost hunters that managed to sneak past security have witnessed the phantom of a nurse that still makes her rounds in the abandoned hallways. Other visitors have heard impossible sounds of squeaky hospital bed wheels echoing throughout the hallways. Not exactly exactly a place you'd like to visit on vacation. Number 5 is the Penhurst Asylum. Formerly known as the Pennsylvania State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic, Penhurst has a long track record of subjecting its patients to torture and malpractice. The asylum, located in Spring City, Pennsylvania, officially closed its doors on December 9, 1987, after nearly 80 years of housing patients. Ex-patients have told stories of being chained to walls, children being kept in cages, and even some being forced to fight other patients. Now closed, Penhurst attracts curious explorers who report lots of paranormal activity from the deceased former inmates. There are reports of visitors being shoved around and items being known to fly across rooms. Audio recordings from ghost hunters have captured eerie voices saying I'll kill you and go away, along with distant shrieks and crying. Number 4 is Willard Asylum for the Chronic Insane. Located in Ovid, New York, the Willard Asylum for the Chronic Insane was built in 1869 and operated until it closed in 1995. Most of the patients at Willard were committed and either forgotten or left by their families to live out the rest of their lives at this facility. When they died, they would be buried in secret across the road in unmarked graves to avoid frightening current patients. The earliest patients came from horrible prisons and poor houses, where they were shackled and beaten. Their conditions in life became extremely severe as a product of their torture, and in death they continued to lash out at those around them. Paranormal sightings at Willard have commonly involved a particular red-headed woman with long hair who walks throughout the hallways and will sometimes let out a harsh scream during the late hours of the night. Number 3 is the Taunton State Hospital. Closed in 1975 and left abandoned until a fire mysteriously destroyed most of it, Taunton State Hospital in Taunton, Massachusetts has an extremely dark history. Built in 1854, Taunton has seen some of America's most dangerously insane criminals, including the serial killer nurse Jane Toppin, who administered slow deaths to 31 of her patients. Many residents and visitors reported feeling uneasy when passing the basement door. Patients recalled having seen specific doctors and nurses escort people down to the basement, never to be seen again. After Taunton's closure, the basement was known as the epicenter for the most intense paranormal visions. Those who entered experienced anxiety attacks, while others have witnessed shadows creeping along the walls. Number 2 is Povelia Island Asylum. Built on an island off of the coast of Venice in 1922, Povelia Island Asylum contained Italy's mentally insane patients, but the island itself harbored a dark and gruesome history that also drove people to madness. In the 18th century, Povelia was used as a quarantine island for those infected with the Black Plague, who would wait to die far from the rest of Italy. It is said that over 100,000 people have died there 
and that 50% of the topsoil consists of human ash. When the asylum was established, its medical staff were known for performing botched lobotomies and sick experiments on the patients. The head doctor himself was driven insane, purportedly by the ghosts of plague victims, and leapt off the hospital bell tower to his death. To this day, locals can still hear ringing from the tower, even though the bell is gone. And number one is Norwich State Hospital for the Mentally Insane. Between the town of Preston and the city of Norwich in Connecticut are the remains of the Norwich State Hospital for the Mentally Insane. Since its opening in October of 1904, it has been prone to tragedies and controversies. Several people have taken their own lives at Norwich, and widespread abuse, both physically and sexually, was commonplace for many patients. Since the facility closed in 1996, it's been known to scare its visitors with loud screams children's voices, wheelchairs, and gurneys that move by themselves, as well as footsteps and groans. The malicious spirits tied to the asylum have also made themselves known by producing clouds of mist, lights with no clear source, and shadowy silhouettes. However, the boldest of them show glimpses of their faces in the reflections of shattered window panes terrifying witnesses. So, that was 10 haunted insane asylums with extremely dark pasts. But if you enjoyed this, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications by clicking the little bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you for watching and sweet dreams.